I am uh, Richard Welty. I am one of the advisory board members for OHM. Uh, Jeff, who already introduced himself, is uh, the other one currently. Um, and today what we are doing is a little different from presentations past because in the past I've done the general overview. And today instead, I think the tactic that Maggie encouraged was to just look at a project and look at issues related to doing a, a good historical project. And I spent some time working on uh, mapping the Erie Canal, which originated uh, in, New well, it's entirely in New York State, and it was a very old effort to improve transportation. And it turns out to be really complicated. And I think the fact that history is complicated is gonna be part of the story here. Um, I'm gonna give you an online example of somebody else's site. And I'm gonna say in advance that I don't really mean to bash the site, but there are some things going on with it. So this is called the Erie Canal Mapping Project. And the first thing I have to say about this is that the guy who did it did an enormous amount of research. I mean, that's abundantly clear. Um, the little arrow pointers are pointing at various locks and other features along the route. Now you see that the line in red there is the path of the canal. Before we assume that that's the answer, we need to click on this other checkbox in the upper left-hand corner because we see that there is an Erie Canal dated 1925, 1825 and one dated 1862. So this is at the same time a clue that the canal's history is more complex than just they built a canal and used it. There's also a checkbox for the barge canal and I just checked that and the barge canal is all the way up here this blue line in the upper right hand corner so that's three different canals and the barge canal presents terminology problems because when the New York State built the third canal they opted not to officially name it the Erie Canal and so people kind of call it the Erie Canal but in the records it's the barge canal which lasted until recently when the current operators, maybe 10 years ago, decided to rename it back to the Erie Canal. So that's just a minor festive element when doing research. So what are the issues with this map that make me concerned? Well, one is that he doesn't have a bibliography. Now, if you click on some of these locks, you will find he has a lot of detail here. And occasionally he will cite a source in one of these boxes, but there's no actual bibliography anywhere or notes. And so what this means is that as a reference source, this is actually kind of hard for me to use. Um, because it's a secondary source that doesn't provide any links back to anywhere else. And then we're going to zoom in here. This is the eastern terminus of the original canal. And so he shows the original canal 1925, and then he shows the uh, enlarged canal 1862. And you'll be impressed if you go looking at the number of articles about the canal that say the enlarged canal was opened in 1862. And that's, that's really not how it happened. Um, the Erie Canal was over capacity the day it opened. Um, they were continually struggling with inferior worksmanship and with the fact that some engineering details weren't worked out. So there are locks at various places in the canal settled and had to be shored up. Um, barges traveling down the canal would wash the earthen sides of the canal away and they would settle on the bottom. So the canal would simultaneously get wider and shallower. And so efforts to enlarge and improve the canal started at the very beginning. And we'll take a quick look and example of that, which we'll go back to when we get into the open historic map side of things. 
this area right here we see a number of large buildings and then there is uh, the loft at harmony mills harmony mills was a uh, early textile mill it was built after the erie canal was initially opened and sources will tell you that the canal was relocated in response to the uh mills construction starting and that happened if it it happened in the 1830s but there are a lot of mysteries in my in front of me about um all of the details here so this is oversimplified because it's claiming that the enlarged canal is 1862 but this line right here was getting moved around in 1837. So oversimplified and there were some auto missions and I'll skip over that. So the concept that I work to in open historic map is recognizing complexity and striving to excel at showing complexity. And the other part of this is do the research and show our work. We have a corner of the wiki we can use for documentation. So in the complexity, uh, New York State has many, many canals. They've been doing canals since uh, the 1820s and really even before that, the Erie Canal is just the best known. The history is really complicated and a habit I know a lot of people have is that there's so much info online that we can pop into our preferred search engine and go looking and find stuff. But I have found myself working harder and digging deeper and the first or second page of a Google return turns out not to be good enough. So let me click on this link and we're gonna to go to open historic map in 1835. And we're going back to the south end of the Erie Canal, that was me, the Albany Terminus. So we see a single lock, a rectangular basin. The canal goes off to the north. We see a basin with connectors to the canal so that you could do some transshipping. And uh, that was how it started. None of this survives today. I'm bumping the time slider because here we are, we've reached 1848 and we see two locks, a larger basin, two more locks into the canal. We see that the transshipment basin has disappeared and now there are a huge number of spurs off the canal and I haven't entered any of the buildings yet, but they're loaded with warehouses. And going back to that original example, that map is talking about 1862 as the date. Well, that's actually the date that New York State decided to declare victory. I mentioned earlier poor worksmanship. Well, this was a public works project in New York State. And anybody who has ever lived in New York State knows that uh, half the money goes somewhere else. And that's just the way New York is. And... Uh, So now that we're here in open historical map, I have largely managed to map the canal north. There's more work to do up here, but I have to find dates and I'll talk about sourcing. This is the area of Harmony Mills. Right now I have mapped building one. And if we bring it up a little newer, that's taking its time. There we go. Now we have buildings uh, one, two, three, and four. And I was able to find records that allowed me to correctly date when the buildings were built. So documentation, I said there's a corner in the wiki. This is the way things are being done for this project at least. Resources and references and just taking a quick look. 
In the New York State Archives, I found a copy of The Mighty Chain, A Guide to Canal Records in the New York State Archives, and I'm just starting to mine that. ErieCanal.org might look like a hobby website, but it's actually the website of the Erie Canal Society, which have provided me with a lot of information. And they turn out to have copies of the first volume of Whitford's History of the Canal System and Whitford's History of the Barge Canal, which are not things that turn up in the top of a source but I was talking to the former librarian of the Canal Society um, a week and a half ago, and he said, you've got to find a copy of Whitford. So I uh, went out and started looking for Whitford, and lo and behold, I found it. There are the Erie Canal survey maps, which are in the uh, New York State Archive website, and they're challenging to work with, but you can get somewhere with them. I have a limited selection of them so far indexed in Map Warper. And so the, the kind of the point I'm trying to make here is that if you just keep digging, you're going to find almost everything if it still exists. So here we are looking at 1834 survey map of the uh, eastern terminus of the Erie Canal. And this map is why I am so confident that I have 1834 right, because I traced it directly. So anyway, going through, those are various references. I'm not going to go in a great deal of detail here. So here I mentioned Whitford. I actually was able to find one, the value, I was able to find the volume that's not online on Amazon, and I have a copy coming in a couple of days. Wikipedia won't get you where you need to be right now. It simply does not have enough data. I think that to the extent that it has been sourced, it's, it's okay, but it can be significantly proved upon. And I think that we need to push into more discussion about OHM and the various Wikimedia projects harder. I'll show some of that in a little bit. So online, I found the mighty chain. I found the survey maps. There's a lot of stuff in the NYPL, the Library of Congress, and old maps online is a great way to dig into other archives. I found Sanborn fire insurance maps, which are in a few places, but I generally go to the Library of Congress site. I used the 1892 map of uh, Albany from Sanborn in order to get the uh, later configuration of the terminus of the canal. USGS has got a significant percentage of their old topo maps online. And um, a lot of ortho imagery is available there too. And I had an interesting revelation about that. Um, because I've been using a lot of 18, excuse me, 1952 aerials, because there are no 1852 aerials of Albany for other mapping projects in the area. And it occurred to me that my perspective is distorted because I'm old. Um, I look at 1952 aerials and I think those aren't really that old, but that's only because I was born in 1958. Um, but then it occurred to me that I have been alive longer than the period between the original Erie Canal being decommissioned and that 1952 aerial pass. The time gap is 35 years. And so I went in and discovered that, yeah, there's an awful lot of the original canal still visible in 1952 that's not today. So that has turned out to be helpful. Here's a Sanborn insurance map index showing the terminus of the canal in 1852. And then you have individual plates, and this is the plate that I used to trace uh, the enlarged canal. And then once you have the plates, eh, I can't zoom on that, can I? You can uh, build a mosaic in Map Warper. This is a mosaic of the uh, 1952 map, 
crops that are not yet fully cropped and aligned. Other things I found online, um, National Registry of Historic Places registration forms. They are uh, NPS documents on nps.gov. Historic engineering records or NPS documents that you can dig out of the Library of Congress and Historic American Building Survey. And so when I map the uh, Harmony Mills in Cohoes, New York by the Erie Canal, I use the National Registry document for a lot of detail. One of the four buildings burned down in the 90s, but I was able to map its footprint off of the 1952 aerial pass. The engineering records are pretty cool. Well, here's the National Registry document, 36 pages on Harmony Mills. This is the historic American engineering record for uh, the Crescent Dam, which is a dam on the Barge Canal, which replaced the first two Erie Canals. And that contained a lot of detail about the construction of the dam. And so this leads to this issue. I have a talk about life cycle and open historic map planned for uh, SOTM US in April, not accepted yet because the program committee is not actually meeting yet. Uh, but the idea is to take the Crescent Dam as a life cycle laboratory since we have this data about its construction. And um, we could also do this with Harmony Mills. Built buildings have been repurposed and destroyed or lost. So I'm thinking that what I'm going to start doing is getting a lot of detail into the life cycle and then we can look at the missing support and open historic map for life cycle and um, use this to have something to show off in April. So that's the end of that. And I had uh, wanted to show you the challenge here. This is Jossum and this is the terminus of the Erie Canal and the challenge of mapping is that all of time is happening all at once. And so we do have the filter mechanisms here. And we can use filters to clear out noise based on the tags. The actual 1834 Erie Canal image is here. All right, this is the uh, survey map. This is the uh, 1890 till mosaic uh, from Sanborn insurance maps. And then there were some things I just discovered today because my copy of Whitford's uh, of Whitford's uh, okay, what window are those in? I got my copy of the Barge Canal book today and discovered that there was a thing back when the Barge Canal was being built called the Barge Canal Bulletin, which came out monthly. And um, I idly decided to go searching and I found uh, the Barge Canal Bulletin digitized in uh, the Internet Archive. So the lesson I got from that is just never stop looking for more stuff. And that's uh, where I am going to stop talking and ask for questions.